thank you lord because you are our living hope there is no other name in whom we have hope we bless you this morning we exalt you we praise you lord hearts are filled with thankfulness lord as we remember what you have done for us thank you lord for for breaking all those chains giving us freedom lord from sin the effects of sin the power of sin and calling us your own thank you lord for joining us together in this manner even as we look to your word we pray lord that you'll speak to us encourage us edify us and take glory from us we give you glory we give you honor in jesus name we pray amen you may be seated what a joy to worship him what a joy to rejoice in him for who he is and what he continues to do in our lives and i count it a privilege once again to be here this sunday and i was looking at this the new thing and i was telling myself this is a new thing i'm speaking consecutively <laughs> over two sundays uh, it has never happened before uh, but it uh, god has planned it that way that i stay here for one more sunday uh, even after last sunday uh, it's always a privilege to be here it's always a joy to be here and to see what the lord has in store for this church and all of us uh, to go uh, forward with him so even as i was meditating uh, for what is in store for this uh, sunday morning for the english service uh god put few thoughts few things i believe are for us so even as you anticipate his word i pray that the god will speak to you uh, as we look into his word uh this is something that i spoke many years back i don't know if it is capstone or uh, somewhere else but god reminded me of what uh, uh, you know he taught me many years back uh that i would like to theme it as uh, uh, when clouds are in the sky it doesn't mean sun is not shining when we see clouds in the sky we may not see the sun but it doesn't mean sun is not shining sun is always shining so we want to look at life in general we want to look at uh, god in particular and our relationship with him in terms of that and uh, one of the stories one of the incidents in the bible that take my attention that took my attention to us from numbers chapter 14 uh was 24 but god is speaking to uh, moses and is saying few things uh, numbers chapter 14 verse 24 it says but because my servant caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly i will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it because my servant caleb has a different spirit and follows me whole heartedly uh god is talking about a different spirit and is uh, talking about he caleb following him whole heartedly and because of that certain promises are made for him so what is the different spirit that caleb had what is this uh, whole hearted following meant is what we are going to look at we know the context we know the story this is sunday school story actually Uh, i don't think we need to go into details but just to rekindle our memories and rekindle our you know uh, what happened there in chapter 13 of numbers we know uh, god tells moses chapter 13 verse 1 i'm reading from the niv version the lord said to moses send some men to explore the land of canaan which i am giving to the israelites from each ancestral tribe send one of its leaders so the lord so at the lord's command moses sent them out from the desert of paran all of them were leaders of the israelites and then the whole names are there so we know the story where god is saying now send some people to explore the land of canaan the promised land which i told you in exodus chapter 3 when we read god told moses that you're going to lead these people then we know the whole story what all happened in egypt and how they reached at this point of time so they are almost at the border and they have to explore they have to go and see and see what is there you know give, give a status report a survey basically a market survey you can say if you want to establish a business similarly you are going to settle there just go and see what's there so he and he specifically says from every tribe you have to 
send one one person and the leaders are selected and they go there then the whole list of uh, people are there now they go and see many things what they are supposed to see verse 17 says when moses sent them to explore canaan he said go up there uh, go up through the through the negev and on into the hill country see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak or few or many what kind of land do they live in is it good or bad what kind of towns do they live in are they unwalled or fortified how is the soil is it fertile or poor are there trees in it or not do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land it was the season for the first tribe grave so very beautifully briefing is done you know we're like a good boss in corporate sectors we get good bosses who will outline everything you know in fact some of the job descriptions we used to write even in missions when we give job descriptions to people we'll have you know you have to do this do this do this and the last will put anything as the boss wants to tell you to do so something like this moses has told every detail look at the land look at the fruit look at the people look at everything and give a good report that's what they needed because that's what they're uh, that's where they're going to stay so they went up verse 21 said they went up and explored the land from the desert of zin as far as rehob toward lebo hamath they went up through the negev and came to hebron where ahiman seshai and talmai the descendants of anak lived hebron had been built 7 years before zoan in egypt when they reached the valley of eshcol they cut off the branch bearing a single cluster of grapes two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs that place was called the valley of eshcol because of the cluster of grapes the israelites cut off there at the end of 40 days they returned from exploring the land so they just did whatever was commanded they did everything wonderfully they even got the fruits from there now they report the reporting on the exploration what they saw they came back to moses and aaron and whole israelite community at kadesh in the desert of paran there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land they gave moses this account we went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey here is its fruit but but the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large we even saw descendants of anak there the amalekites live in the negev the hittites jebusites and amorites live in the hill country and the canaanites live near the sea and along the jordan so they're giving an honest report so they're not lying here let's understand this when people came back from there they were telling the truth they were not hiding anything the reality was that there were people who were strong who were big who were you know and also the land was you know of milk and honey meaning it was very uh, beautiful land everything was good there but there people who are there are powerful this is what very important they saw that the people who live there are powerful and cities are fortified and very large mind you again i'm saying they did not lie this is the truth did they lie no 10 people can't lie you know it is it is there it is the reality there now Caleb, that's what sets Caleb apart. Verse 30, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. This is very, very important to understand. Why God is saying in chapter 14, Caleb has a different spirit because Caleb saw what God promised. They all, he also saw the one who promised. Please understand here. It's not only the promise that he remembered, but he also remembered who promised it. I think Israelites missed the whole point. Many times we can hold on to the promise of God and not God. It happens. That's where you can be shaken. People knew. This is not something alien. These are leaders, mind you. These are not some ordinary people. Every tribe's leader was chosen and every tribe's leader was given a task, a clear mandate, what you have to see, what you have to do. They came back and gave the report Actually, they should have stopped at the report. Exploration, they were supposed to report, not give advice to Moses. Sometimes we go beyond the brief and land in trouble. I call it foot in mouth disease. You know, there is something called foot in mouth disease. This, this is foot in mouth disease. They were supposed to just give a report. But they come and say, oh, these people. But then what Caleb is saying? Caleb is saying, we shall go. 
don't worry about it because Caleb saw a sense of fear coming in they're saying people are very powerful people are very so what so what you are supposed to go and take that land that's the promise of god because god promised it we can go the confidence that Caleb exhibited here that we can certainly do it then we see what happens these these people come and say in verse 33 we saw the nephilim there the descendants of anak come from nephilim we seemed like grasshoppers in own eyes and we looked the same to them that's what happens when you look at the clouds when you look at the problems you start looking low on yourself when you start looking at people when you start looking at problems when you start looking at all the issues that surround you you'll forget who you are also forget who god is that is one and you also forget who you are for him okay he might be a giant like goliath let's say big guy maybe but then you're not a gross hopper the problem may be big but you are who you are see this is what the problems do to us this is what the the seemingly troublesome situations the seemingly difficult situations difficult people may look to us in front of them we may look small might be we might be small as well but that doesn't change anything i am who i am if somebody is taller than me doesn't make me shorter i am who i am just because you are 6'3 doesn't make fight and short there may be five to fellow also no it doesn't matter you are who you are he they're saying our own eyes we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes so to god today god is asking who are you seeing yourself as so caleb had a different spirit because his focus was on god not only the promise of god but on god so he didn't see himself as grasshopper he is saying we can certainly do it we'll go and possess the land and who are these people warriors trained in egypt to become warriors did they have a military training when they came from there no ordinary people in fact they were slaves mentally weak physically weak perhaps walking those places but then he saying we can do it but other people are saying we can't do it we are just grasshoppers we are nobodies you know we have this self pity many of us some people get confused between self pity and humility <laughs> humility is not weakness humility is strength self pity is weakness don't think you know if pastor says sing pastor says preach pastor says do ayyo i can't do it hmm? you can't do it on your own strength but in christ you can do everything so caleb saw who god is caleb saw god's promises caleb remembered god's promises whereas these people are saying no 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 we can't do it we are grasshoppers in front of them they will then not only that what they do that night was chapter 14 that night was when all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud all the israelites grumbled against moses and aaron and the whole assembly said to them if only we had died in egypt or in this wilderness why is the lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword our wives and children will be taken as plunder wouldn't it be better for us to go back to egypt and they said to each other we should choose a leader and go back to egypt that's what happens when you hear reports like this that's why i tell people you know some people are walking talking complaint boxes you meet them you'll get depressed they are never happy no matter what calvin and emmanuel try here to hallelujah and all huh? you meet them with taru every time they have complaints only they're never happy ye laab mandi you're going to heaven that's the only laabum hmm? if that is not enough for you everything you'll be sobbing everything will be crying if the kingdom perspective if you don't have that god who is promised me kanan he has brought me there i am going to there that's it doesn't matter who is there because it is god i trust in it is god who i believe in it is god who has led me thus far it is god who will take me there he said he will take me there i will go there 
then you see these giants and get worried and you make others also depressed not only you are weak you are making others weak that's why i always say mind your language when you speak to others speak blessing speak encouragement people are already in trouble people are already struggling we all have our own difficulties in different forms so when we come together as children of god we are supposed to encourage another not to you know falsify things i'm not saying deny there is a problem but tell them that in this problem there is god with you and god is available to you it is not covering up i don't suggest telling everything will be all right it is not all right somebody is sick you can't say everything will be all right agree that there is you are sick i know you are suffering but there is healing in his name there is salvation in his name there is you know every possibility of you recovering in his name we'll pray for you comfort them some people will come and say oh i am doing everything right still the problems are coming to me good you are on the right track that's what bible says didn't jesus say you will be persecuted didn't he say you guys read different bible <laughs> he said in your in my name when you walk in my name when you live you will be persecuted there will be problems in fact i tell people no problem is a problem that means you are doing nothing if you walk in the light if you walk in the paths of jesus there will be problems but problems are not the problem how we focus where is our focus is the problem devil is a master you know in distracting us because he knows he cannot destroy us so he will just put us on a self destruct mode by distracting us he cannot destroy us devil is scared of us when christians give devil to unnecessary credit i get upset he is already defeated what did we sing hallelujah somebody louder worship team they disappear always no worship team after some yeah. they are here somewhere worship team can i see you oh, oh thank god good some churches they disappear after worship if we have the victory we didn't we declare victory victory over everything because god is on our side so you'll not be worried you'll not be focusing on the problems here they are saying oh let's go back to egypt what is the point being honest i am not being promoted what is the being uh, what is the point of being leading a life of integrity when i'm losing my job when i'm not getting this when i'm not getting that what is the point the point is you're going to heaven what has honesty brought you what has integrity brought you what is you know some children come and say uncle those people cheated and passed i didn't cheat i got less marks i'll say yeah you'll still enter heaven there you don't need distinction you don't need to be selected in iit and all these places to go to heaven praise god if you are selected by cheating you may go to iit but you'll go to hell with that iit degree what do you want that's kingdom that's eternal perspective god is saying focus on that that's why caleb spirit was different he did not look at the way people looked at things perceive things even though they are real they're not faking it they're not lying about it they are talking the truth they they all saw the same thing they all went through the same land they all went to same places they all had the same fruit same experience but caleb is saying i don't care for all these things i am looking at who god is and what god has promised i am going to stick to that and he is whole heartedly following god no doubt whole hearted means undivided undivided he is not looking here and there he is saying this is it God is there with me God is for me God has called me God has promised so I will move on doesn't matter which giants are there the clouds are there clouds will come and go so what sun will rise no matter what sun will rise in this time in our in our in our life our sun s o n not s u n the sun will rise Jesus will rise Jesus will be with us Jesus will always lift us up along with him therefore we will not worry Moses then comes Aaron comes and they pray face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there chapter four, verse 5 Joshua is also there no uh, you know Caleb also is there they are praying they are saying let's not you know lord let this not happen 
they want to choose a new new leader they want to throw the throw moses out verse 9 only do not rebel against the lord they're pleading with people and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them their protection is gone but the lord is with us do not be afraid of them they are encouraging and how many people are there here please mind here the whole israelites are on one side saying let's go back let's go back to egypt we'll get those beatings no problem they forgot all that they forgot all that but when moses how many people came moses aaron caleb and joshua they are telling hey don't worry man don't rebel against god don't rebel against god just listen to him and let's not be worried about these people let's not be afraid of these people we will devour them their protection is gone but the lord is with us do not be afraid of them this is what a christian should talk about this is what a christian should look at this is what a christian should walk like this is what is the the, the new thing that should happen in our lives that circumstances won't determine our walk circumstances won't determine moving to the places moving to the uh, you know in in faith wherever god takes us be it career be it relationship be it anything in every aspect of our life we need to know that if this is god who has called me but let let me just give you a disclaimer here if god has called let me just dis- give a disclaimer sometimes we can go overboard we decide and tell god to wish and uh, tell god to bless it no i'm not talking about that why caleb was different because he remembered what god promised so it is plan of god work of god they're following so don't confuse it with your plan many times we plan and tell god to bless our plans i'm not talking about such plans i'm talking about if it is god's plan if it is god's will if god has clearly told you let you he will give you victory he will take you to the end in such cases there will be discouragement there will be people trying to pull you down there will be people trying to rebel against you there will be people who will not understand what you are saying it doesn't matter you need to say hey even if you are a minority even if you are four people like this in front of this thousands of people they say please do not rebel against god god has promised us kanan we will go there yes they are big yes there are problems but god he is going to give us victory that conference they had but then what happens verse 10 but the whole assembly talked about stoning them then the glory of the lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the israelites whole assembly wants to stone them for saying what don't rebel against god then beautifully moses prays i'm not going to that that's a different topic altogether moses pleads with god says god don't do this god wants to destroy them god says i'm fed up with this rebellious people none of these people will survive i'll just finish them off moses only you will survive through you i'll raise a nation but then moses pleads please god don't do this for your name's sake what will people say what will egyptians say god took them out and finished them off don't do that god and god relents and god says okay because of that i will not verse th- verse 20 the lord replied i have forgiven them as you asked nevertheless as surely as i live and as surely as the glory of the lord fills the whole earth not one of those who saw my glory and the signs i performed in egypt and in the wilderness but who disobeyed me and tested me 10 times not one of them will ever see the land i promised on oath on their ancestors no one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it okay i'm sparing their life but they will not see the promised land such a sad situation isn't it very very sad situation where god spared their life but they missed the promised land because they rebelled against god many of us may still may scrape through to heaven but will miss the goodness of god the greatness of god the power of god the authority of god the majestic works of god the victory of god will be missing all of that because of our rebellious nature 
because of our disobedience because of our you know lack of understanding of what god can do but god is saying children focus on me yes giants are there yes problems are there yes difficulties are there yes challenges are there but i am also there am i not enough for you then he goes on to say caleb has it a different spirit whole hearted commitment talking about faith last week i was speaking about faith it's very amazing you know we talked about uh, if you remember hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 beautiful verse where it clearly defines what faith is now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of about what we do not see but interestingly the last two verses talk something very different 39 and 40 hebrews chapter 11 39 and 40 these were all commended for their faith yet none of them received what has been promised what had been promised since god had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect faith is what it's about confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see definitely then there is a whole list of people people of faith so many people abraham moses all these people are listed there and towards the end we read that they did not receive what had been promised they were all commended for their faith yet they did not receive what was promised think about this that is called holding on to the promise or the promise maker faith is not holding on to promises alone it is holding on to the one who made those promises please understand that many times we have transactional faith you do this i do this you do this i do this you don't do this i don't do this if you if my prayer is answered i'll come to the church if my prayer is not answered i'll go to the next church at least hyderabad you have choice north india we don't have that choice we don't go to church is it transactional is it faith all about getting things from god alone or is it something beyond that we are getting god into our lives faith is not getting things or you know things from god it's about getting god into our lives and saying god you're enough for me you are there with me so why do i care when i come to hyderabad i don't need to worry i know somebody will pick me from airport i know somebody will take me home i know somebody will feed me well increase my madhya pradesh very well no chatisgarh also i can cut from here huh? these guys and they i don't know three times you feed me rice also so tasty i can't deny in biryani form or lemon rice form or different forms you take care of me i don't worry i don't worry and you know, where will i sleep what will i eat even my clothes are washed and ironed and given to me i don't have to worry this week i stayed whole week osha got the mind and nicely that's why i'm looking tip top today so i don't have to worry it's not about, even if he is not there i don't worry because i know god has called me here so god is saying faith you have hope for something that you have you know confidence that you you have that you are hoping for assurance about what you do not see but it doesn't matter even if you don't get what is promised still you'll hold on to the faith talking about moses exodus 3 god called moses to say what you will take my people to canaan the promised land did moses reach poor guy no such a sad state i always feel bad for him I really feel bad for him he struggled with this grumblers looking at garlic and onion and god knows what paradise biryani they were remembering only the past always again they want to go back here in this incident they they say we'll go back to egypt he struggled with such people and he didn't reach canaan only two people reached joshua and caleb but god is commanding them because the faith is not about getting things getting god is faith keeping god is faith having god is faith enjoying him is faith 
so caleb had a different spirit you know when did caleb get his promise land do you know the story okay maybe if i come frequently we'll do old testament studies now i know what to preach for next few months whenever i come here come with me joshua chapter 14 caleb was promised god said no caleb is my special one we read it in numbers okay i'll prom- he promised some land he-, he said he'll go there what when did he get it come with me to joshua chapter 14 verse 6 onwards <coughs> joshua chapter 14 verse 6 onwards now people have entered okay now that they have entered this land promised land and after few years this is happening now the people of judah approached joshua at gilgal joshua was the leader after moses not caleb okay and caleb now caleb approaches Joshua and Caleb son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said to him you know what the lord said to Moses the man of god at Kadesh Barnea about you and me i was 40 years old when Moses the servant of the lord sent me to Kadesh Barnea to explore the land and i brought him back a report according to my convictions but my fellow israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear i however followed the lord my god wholeheartedly so that So on that day Moses swore to me the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly now then verse 10 now then just as the Lord promised he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the wilderness so here I am today 85 years old do the math Hmm. instant noodles generation hmm? we want everything somebody was praying god give me patience give me now <laughs> we are like that we want everything tak 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 are god has his own time he gives his own time and his time is the best that's faith faith is not about you know getting things and oh i told you you should do in fact jesus has very beautiful word who seeks a sign people come and look for signs no he says only evil and wicked generation seeks a sign no sign other than sign of jonah will be given to you is referring to his own resurrection his death and his resurrection we don't seek signs because we have god with us who needs a sign when the original is there when you have the whole movie with you you want to watch trailers PVR has started some crazy thing. Have you seen that? They have trailers. One rupee you can watch trailers for half an hour. In case you don't know, I'm not promoting it, but I'm telling you. I was like, we get irritated when we go to a movie, watching trailers for half an hour. People are paying one rupee to watch trailers now. It's there. It's real. At least in Ludhiana we have it. I don't know Hyderabad, but in Ludhiana we have. In Punjab we have. Why you want to see trailers when you have the full movie with you? Why you want to see signs when you have God of miracle signs with you? God is saying will you hold on to me my dear will you hold on to me i am enough and he's saying in hebrews they did not receive what was promised yet they did not move from their faith they did not question god they chose to die they chose to suffer they didn't it they didn't care if the promise was not fulfilled who promised by the way whose promises we are talking about god's promises We talk about God's promises. God promised something they did not receive, but they were commended their faith because since God has planned something better for us. God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. This is something, you know, I I fail to understand. I really struggle with this verse. A perfect God makes everything perfect, isn't it? God makes everything perfect. he is perfect but he is saying there is something that god made that will not be perfect apart from us wow that crown will get its glory when i wear it how do you like it god is saying my i made a crown in this heaven but vijay only when you come it will get its glory so i am looking at that crown i am looking at something will be made perfect because of me not what is happening here 
even if i don't get what god promised me even if i don't get where god promised me but i'll still hold on to god to get to where where god is saying it is waiting the perfection will come when you come there that's faith by the way did moses not reach canaan actually he reached what happened at transfiguration transfiguration you remember transfiguration jesus went up three people were there who were there jesus elijah and moses what is better with jesus or with this grumblers i think <laughs> moses wouldn't have enjoyed canaan with this grumblers god will fulfill his promise not the way we perceive or not the way we want even the way you know we would have explained to everybody it doesn't matter moses said no i will lead come but he didn't go it doesn't matter because he was holding on to god and god fulfilled it in his own beautiful way people saw moses there therefore chapter 12 begins hebrews chapter 12 begins therefore verse 12 see all these chapter divisions and all happened later on for us you have to read it as a letter i think last week also said that therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith fixing our eyes on jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith this is where the whole that's called game changer for me those who sustain those who remain those who fix it there not moving right left only they will see this perfection in their own lives the perfect gift that god has given us the perfect thing that god has planned for us we will only receive when you're fixing our eyes you look here and there you miss the whole point you will you will fall short but his grace will bring us back i'm not saying we will be turned away forever no i'm not saying that i'm not even suggesting that but we'll miss certain things we have to come back and say god i am distracted by this even though it is real let let me again remind you even though it is real it is not something i'm imagining the giants were real the problems were real the challenges were real in the promised land they were all real nothing is fake the problems that you're going through the issues that are going through are real but god is saying fine fix your eyes on me don't let those medical reports worry you don't let those icici bank let us scare you the emis and all those things don't 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 worry i got it i got it i am in control fix your eyes on me keep coming to me keep coming back to me and say god it is you who has called me it is you who have ordained me it is you who have brought me thus far and you will take me to canaan if not this with this season but like caleb or maybe like moses are you prepared for that for fears or maybe hundreds of years later but we need to hold on because it is promise keep a more important than the promise please remember that the promise keeper is more important than the promise because he does beautiful things he does greater things so let not this clouds let not this confusion that come by in our lives deter us he is still the same he is the same yesterday today and forever that's the god we worship that's the god we know that's what he's saying fix your eyes and fixing eyes is not easy for us it's not easy and we see it on indian roads all the time hmm? this morning when we were coming uh, what happened in front of our um, nothing happened no accident don't look at us we are safe one guy was coming opposite direction okay just in front of a mall right here and we are coming this side we had to take a left turn and come he is giving us a look <laughs> as if we did something wrong we are on our lane we are coming to the mall and he is coming in the opposite direction bike fellow anger look my pastor like what did i do don't look at them don't worry about them no point fighting with them let it be if i stop there and said you know and or we went just ignore and there is something i always use in my home ignorantia blessia <laughs> sometimes just ignore take it easy 
because that is the distraction the devil brings to take away our focus from god so go back to god if there is some big trial coming up if there is a big problem coming up don't look right left don't look at people don't look at situation don't look at anybody look to god that's what caleb did that's why he was a different spirit what spirit are you carrying a fearful spirit an angry spirit a frustration spirit discouraging spirit or a spirit that says i am going to be victor because jesus already given me victory in this because he has promised me to get there and he'll get me there maybe for two years maybe 100 years doesn't matter i will hold on to him i can tell you god doesn't want to do a miracle apart from you have you ever considered this he cannot do a miracle in your life if you're not part of it miracle to happen i need to be party to it no then only i'll experience it only when i'm blind when i see I, there is a miracle for me so you want to be part of miracle go through this challenge go through this cloud go through this problems hang on stay on even though people want to kick this leader out the leader is pleading with them pleading with god for them that's the attitude we have to develop in those circumstances fixing our eyes on god god you have promised and we know you are real we know you are with us and we want to hold on to you don't let anything or anybody distract you hold on to him fix your eyes on to him because he is the pioneer and he is the perfecter of a faith and faith is not doing things our way and telling god to bless it is telling god we are happy the way you are leading us if it means 40 years of wandering we will wander it was difficult actually it is not that so far you know that from egypt to promised land direct path would have but god said fine fine hang on sometimes you'll have those 40 years difficulty years but you have to go through that holding on to jesus not questioning god not 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 tormenting god with our you know some people arm twist god you said you said some prayers i'm very scared they tell god what he promised as if he doesn't know. we need to remember god knows everything you promised therefore hmm? that's 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 not a right prayer for me yes we thank god for his promises but for me it is more than that. i say god you are enough for me i tell you god works miracles god does great things only we need to hold on to it last 24 years my family was away from me my, my family means my mother my brothers they were all away from me this year god suddenly started opening doors in a beautiful way miraculous way just day before yesterday i came to know my nephew studies here in geetam i didn't even know that till recently i could go meet with my daughter this nephew of mine but it took so many years he's in college now must be 19 or something but it took years but it's fine god is saying will you still hold on to me vijay or will you say till my family is reunited till my family reconciliated i will not serve you god is a don't so i will do my work so i need to focus on what god has called me it is not subject to what he does he will do and he will do everything beautifully in his own way in his own time my father i don't know if i shared here i want to share here today i have i have a great burden for my family all of them are hindus they don't know the lord 24 years back i came to the lord and ever since that holding on to promises christians teach you so i am holding on to the promise when you believe you and your family will be saved i held on to promise reminded him also when i'm preaching here i'm speaking from my own life okay don't confuse yourselves i also did all those then i realized it's useless to pray like that he knows family has to be said he will save initially i used to say that but now i don't say only thank god that you are there and you'll take care in 2019 god asked me to write a letter to my family my parents my mom and dad who writes letters these days i still i wrote in telugu i wrote by the way okay i can read write telugu in case you missed my sermon in telugu you can try today morning sermon okay <laughs> i wrote to them thanking them for bringing me up uh, well you know nurturing me protecting me taking care of me investing into my life so many things later i shared my testimony why i believe in jesus why is jesus important for me why i am doing what i am doing this is in 19 years of serving the lord after that i am writing this then i towards then i wrote 
even if you don't receive me at home, they legally disowned me. They have thrown me out of my house. Uh, they have taken me to court and all that. So we didn't have much contact all these years. In the letter I wrote, even if you don't receive me into your home, all this life I have no problem. But please receive Jesus into your life so that we can be together forever. That's what I wrote in 2019. No response came. 2020, COVID came. 2021, when the second wave was at peak, I get this information from my brother that daddy is sick, mummy is sick, I am sick, my wife is sick, we are all in the hospital and it's uh, very serious. They are already in our hospital for one week. Okay? And uh, let me just say, <laughs> okay? And they are very serious. Uh, but we are not getting that medicine, remdesivir. You know, the, those days there was a big thing about remdesivir. We are not getting it. Can you arrange for it? Uh, by God's grace, we knew, I knew people in the health ministry in uh, Chhattisgarh and all. They arranged it in a couple of hours, got the medicine for them, and we did all that. But then my burden was, I know my dad and mom's condition, pretty bad. The reports I got it, you know, through WhatsApp and all that, they're very bad. Less than 30 SpO2 and lungs were all gone. X-ray, nothing is there, it's all white. So I knew that it's very serious. But I prayed, God, now at least they should know you. This is the time, you know, I don't know. I cannot go there, but you are there, so do something about it. God, in his wonderful ways, enables me to realize that the doctor who is treating my dad in the ICU was a Christian believer. And it happened such that uh, uh, we had common friends, you know. I didn't know this doctor, but we had common friends. So through that, I talked to him and I said, uh, Doctor, just tell my dad when you meet him this evening that Vijay is thinking about you. He loves you, but he wants you to remember the letter he wrote in 2019, couple of years back. And uh, because hardly any communication. So if you're wondering what that letter is special, because there's no communication. So even one thing was a big thing for both, both parties, I would say. So remember that letter and consider that. And I said, if he responds to that, please pray a prayer with him and let him know the Lord. And praise be to God, he did exactly that. My dad that day accepted Jesus. Next morning he passed on, but he's with the Lord. This is our God. It may be 45 years, it may be 100 years, it may be 400 years, it doesn't matter. God will do his beautiful things. And this year, it happens so that I met my youngest brother. I would just want to add to this how God works. Youngest brother, 20 years we were not in touch. And I, you know, God opened a way for me to meet this family. Early, I met them recently also, but also in April I met them in Bilai. And this... Uh, my nieces and my nephew, they're such beautiful kids. The older one, the niece, shares the birthday with me, 23rd April. You can please mark it down, wish me on 23rd April. <laughs> okay. So she shares with me, you know, and we're just casually talking. They're very happy. Within two hours, we become so friendly, you know, we're having fun and all that. Then suddenly this girl tells me, Bade Papa, like Padanana, uh, now I know why Tata always used to say, being born on Vijay's birthday is not enough. Be like him. What should he say actually? Being born is okay, don't be like him. <laughs> because they threw me out of the house. They don't like me, that's what I thought. But then he used to say this, that means my dad must have received Christ before also. I don't know. We will know when we meet him. You know. But he saw the difference. But all these years I tell you, God said, focus on me. Never compromise. My parents gave me enough options to go back to them, but I had to do little compromises. Shuddhi Karan. Even my mother gave me one marriage proposal also, even after getting married and having a child. Did I share that? In 2004, she calls me and says, ah, whatever happened, happened. Come back home. I said, okay, great. Hallelujah. God answered my prayer. Four years, I can go back. But I know there will be some clause. So what is it? What should I do? She said, no, come home. This is this girl from our own caste. Not very rich. Just get married to her according to our tradition. I said, okay. What is this? Mommy, you know I'm married. I have a daughter. That time only, I had only one daughter that time. I said, yeah, I know, but I'm not asking you to keep her with you. If you like her, take her with you. Otherwise, leave her with us. Nice offer, no? Coming from mother. Girl also, money also. She said, we'll restore back all the property that we took away from you few acres of land and all those things, houses and all. I said, Mommy, my Bible says, even if I look at a woman lustfully, I'm an adulterer. Leave alone marriage. 
and adulterer will not go to heaven i would rather go to heaven and keep this woman give the offer to daddy <laughs> i was irritated actually she said pura pagal ho gaya focus on jesus he is a promise keeper and the promise keeper is whom we hold on to not just the promises faith is not getting everything we want faith is having god with us what we need is god not the things of god the things of god will come and go as much as he desires and they are enough for us please don't run after things of god run after him to whom everything belongs in him everything is complete in him everything is you know done on the cross jesus said it is finished everything that is required for us is finished we don't need anything more other than god it is very tempting friends to look at problems circumstances needs wants desires family this and that they are all perish faith is having god and fixing our eyes on god and moving where he wants us to take i want to encourage you it will be tough it's not easy mind you this 24 years are not easy emotionally draining challenging sometimes spiritually challenging you know the devil puts in your head bada agya preacher his own family is not saved that lie used to come to my head that was a lie the devil will tell me who are you to tell others about jesus when your own parents are not believing you when your own brothers are not believing you how can you preach the gospel so i asked god ha ah, that is true no what is the authority i have moral authority i have god said you are not telling your story you are telling my story <laughs> what is your problem if you tell your story you worry my story i'm telling you to tell what's your problem go and preach my story no i didn't ask you to tell your story that released me he said yes that's that's the distraction and some people come don't want to worship here because they're not so good become good and come no hmm? who is stopping you some people are confused we met somebody i don't want to mention the names not arvin joshua don't mistake him i am in movie field and how can i worship he's a great musician pastor and we were talking pastor can take the freedom of naming people i can't i am in the movie field so what you are a worship leader your god has given you talent come you're not doing some rubbish movies you're just giving music there you're not singing vulgar songs there you're doing the it's a vocation after all god used lydia god used you know uh, aquila priscilla not only paul and peter faith is doing things right with god wherever god has placed you didn't we hear testimony from sister last week she started with fellowship kala how many three four people hundreds of people today she is there who can go there to infosys and all these companies tcs billy graham also won't have been able to reach kala only you can go there be there be the witness hold on to the faith focus on god don't worry about this other things will i lose my job she would have thought about it what will my boss think didn't you the thought would devil would have brought it you'll say don't care my focus is on jesus i'm not lifting kala or anybody here but i'm telling how god works so where is your focus clouds will be there problems will be there circumstances will be there but he's saying fix it focus on me don't worry about anything i got it covered that's the perspective see that's what separated caleb from others his new mind you know the new perspective he had i am not going to look at other things like others see they may be true they may be real they may not be lying but doesn't matter for me the focus is jesus i want you all to close your eyes and think about where your eyes are fixed and think about where your mind is today where your faith is today is it in the person of jesus or the works and miracles and all those things that he does that he will do anyway but we need to grow where we say god you are enough for me where you say god i know even if those promises are not fulfilled you still remain my god nothing changes just like those shadrach meshach and abednego sat in that fire before getting into the fire our god is capable of taking us out unscathed from this fire but even if it doesn't we will still not bow down in front of the idol that's faith my friends to fall into the fire with confidence 
to walk into that fire confidently go into that lions den with confidence go into that promised land with confidence that victory belongs to god and we will have the victory and we have the victory we have to declare father god i thank you i thank you lord for your word thank you lord father for the spirit that caleb had a different spirit as you acknowledged in your word lord help us lord to have that kind of spirit and that kind of whole hearted submission to you lord father where we say god we want to hold on to you more than anything else including your own promises lord we want to hold on to you and you alone we want to fix our eyes on you and you alone there may be darkness around us there may be difficulties around us there may be uncertainty around us we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but we know lord that you are there right there in the tomorrow around us you are there in us you are there help us not to forget that ever lord thank you lord thank you lord that you are a miracle working god thank you lord that you are a powerful god thank you lord that you are a god who has promised us to be with us always and we hold on to you over those promises lord thank you master thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus for the victory we have victory over every sin victory over every negativity victory over every discouragement victory over every thing that the enemy tries to bring us to distract us to lead us into darkness into alleys that are not meant for us lord if any one of us is struggling there lord father have question marks in their mind lord father let them know that you are with them and that is enough for them lord you are a god who makes the way in the wilderness you are a god who parts the red sea you are a god who lord father brings the dead lazarus out of the tomb oh what is impossible for you lord all the problems that we go through are nothing in compared to all these things lord oh lord even if we don't receive what is promised we want to hold on to you because we know you have something better for us increase our faith master let it not be a transactional faith master let it be faith purely based on love love that we received from you love that we ought to reciprocate to you help us lord build us lord shape us lord forgive us lord we give you glory we give you honor in jesus name we pray amen amen